Hi everyone, uh, this is Ashraf from Bangla AI and good night to everyone because I'm presenting from a different part of the globe. Uh, right now I'm in Bangladesh, but usually I live in the United States. So good night, it's a straight 10 hours time difference. So me, I'm here with Bangla AI. So what is Bangla AI? So let's tell me some background. So more than 200,000 legal Bangladeshi immigrants uh, lives in the United States. And guess what? Half of them lives in the New York City. If I want to be very specific, they live in very four areas, such as Ozen Park, like mostly in Queens, Jamaica, Queens, that lives in some part of Brooklyn, and they live some part of Bronx. So that's a uh, very few people lives in the Manhattan. And talking about English proficiency rate, they have only half of the populations of Bangladesh immigrants are fluent in English, half of them are not. So what for that reason, the community is deprived from the mainstream journalism that we can see in America, especially in New York Times, Associated Press, or any other mainstream media that's in English. So all the data is from Pew Research Center. So we come up with a solution with Bangla AI when we think about that, that Bangla AI will give a solution to US-based Bengali ethnic media journalists access to important news informations. And the question arise, how? Here is a solution. So first of all, what Bangla AI will do. So Bangla AI will search relevant, inform, in, relevant important informations for the people of Bengali ethnic community that has been published in mainstream media, such as New York Times, The City, or Associated Press. And then it will translate for them. So when journalists will use Bangla AI, they will see the information well to, to them in Bengali rather than in English. So that's other part, there is, will also do summarization in English and Bengali as well. So it will skip the time limit, the journalist, ethnic media journalists spend lots of time for summarizing, searching, and translating the news that is relevant for Bangladeshi ethnic media community, ethnic community in the New York City. So why Bangla AI? So we are thinking this is an artificial intelligence based solution that will build a bridge between the mainstream media and the ethnic media. So it will be a bridge for the audience that New York Times will never reach upon. And it will be a bridge for the audience that will never read New York Times because of the language barrier that can consume the important information from the mainstream media. So when we share this vision together, we start up with the team. So our team is so diverse, like three of us live in literally three different countries. I live in the United States in Texas, and I have journalism background. I'm a PhD student at Texas Tech, and I also started my career as a journalist. Ashraf al -Hawk, he's advanced helping us with machine learning. And Nabil, he's taking care of our web development side. So we have different expertise in our team. So there are more than 10 to 15 ethnic medias based in New York cities, but Right now we are working with three, uh, three uh, ethnic media outlets in New York City. So how the Bangla AI will work. So you can see the front page where uh, we, you can see that they will search some information on news based in New York Times or Associate Press or the city. And it will show in their news feed. After when they pick the news, there will be a line well, if they want the summary, and then they can also have a translations. So for example, if they want to translate in news from the New York Times, they can get the translation in the right hand side and then can copy the translation and they can use the translation to publish in their ethnic media for their audience. Now, the most important questions, because they are translating informations from the New York Times Associated Press or third party. So what will happen with the copyright issue? First of all, we because we will partner with the mainstream media journalists so they can use the byline as it's copied from Bangla AI. So that's where they can protect the copyright issue. And we will, most of the journalists, ethnic media that doesn't have any training on copyright, right now they just take the news and just publish it. So they will also get the copyright training as well. So that's what we're planning. So talking about a draft timeline, by the end of this month, we will finalize our UI design, and then we'll create a walkable prototype, and then we will finalize the prototype for training. And in the first week of August, we were planning to give a hands-on training of journalists 
to about Bangla AI. We are already talking with the CCM about that. And that's all from me. If you have any questions, concerns, comments, I'm here. Thank you so much. All right, thank you so much, Ashrafal, and especially for joining us um, late at night. Let me pull up the panelists here. All right, so Cheryl. All right. Okay, the floor is yours. Go ahead, Ned. I went first last time. I, I felt like I should wait. Um, but uh, first of all, thank you. And I, I think it's a, a, a great project, uh, a great problem that you're trying to solve that obviously extends beyond the Bengali community. Um, you know, these are, are, are definitely underserved uh, audiences when you're speaking about non-English speaking audiences and um, being able to bring this into them and also help those newsrooms with their resourcing is really helpful. Um, where I got a little bit lost was your, your addressing of the copyright information. I, I didn't really understand how it accounted for copyright or not. Um, could, you, could you cover that again? Yeah, thank you so much for asking this question. Because for example, if you take any content, even in translate content, because we are not creating any content. We are partnered with like New York Times or for example, the city. So they will have to translate this content and they will republish for their audience. So this is a tool. So then a copyright issue might become because for example, if the New York Times said, hey, you can't just translate my news and just use it. So that's why I will have the bag because I will have partners with the New York Times and they will write it down in the byline It's from uh, Bangla AI because I have the partner. So if they translate the news and use it in the news side, they're backed. New York Times will not sue them or like they will know that, okay, they are using other people's property or copyright. Like that's why it's an important issue we think like we should address. Okay, I understand now. You're gonna have a partnership with them and 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 cover the costs or, or have it comped or something. My, my other question, I guess, is on the, you know, there's always a sensitivity around automatically translated um, uh, text um, or, or just language uh, altogether. Is there any, is there any safeguard in place or at least a, a way to get the partner publishers to ensure that they're reviewing it for idiosyncrasies or anything like that? Uh, thank you so much. That's a very good question. Uh, first of all, we are not, we will not highlight, tell any journalist that use our tool, just paste it as it is. First of all, we want to use the AI, but we also want journalists to use their journalistic creative things. So first of all, it will save the time. Tell you the story. When I visit some journalists in the small ethnic media houses in New York City, most of them are the journalists are part-time and they live in the Queens, Jamaica or bronze and they're, they're, they're not like well of cubed people. So what our plan at least give them something so that they can work on it. So definitely there will be a gatekeeping and we will always, because we are not just selling the product or giving them the product, we are also giving them the training. I myself, I'm bilingual, I will go to the New York City. We are already talking with the CCM about the training and we will tell them how you can get best out of it. Definitely we will never recommend just copy paste and publish, we'll recommend use your own journalistic skills, but just use it the tool to save some of your time for searching and translating. I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Um, I mean, I think that the service is really important. Um, and, you know, um, as you learn and iterate, it'll have a lot of um, utility, not just for, um, the, you know, Bangladeshi community, but really for any community where there's a large population of folks um, who don't speak whatever dominant language in whatever locale. So I think that's, that's a huge thing. Um, and I think your point about the copyright training is going to be critical um, because, you know, it's one thing, even in these republication guidelines, 
um, making sure people know, can I use that video? Is that a Getty image? Is that, you know, who, who has attribution? How do I attribute it properly? I know that's something um, that community and ethnic media can get into trouble with sometimes. So that um, component um, is critical. So I'm wondering, I know you will have the partnerships on the mainstream side, um, will you similarly kind of bring people in in a partnership model with training before onboarding them to this tool? Or will it kind of be open to anyone to engage with who may be coming from different um, understandings of copyright law? Uh, that's a very good question. Thank you so much. Uh, that's why we are, because it's a new platform for ethnic media journalists, that's why I will try, like I'm trying to, I already talked with Mikhail on CCM, and uh, so we are trying to uh, make something like that. So we know that this tool is handy, but there is some sort of gray areas. That's why before we give them the tool, we will have a small training with the journalist and we want to make sure clear about the gatekeeping that net arts, we want to make clear about the copyright issues that we know it's a very gray areas where to work. And we are working on that. So that's why we are not just making a tool. We are also developing training materials so that and, and we are also talking about AI literacy of the journalist. And, you know, like we are talking about a very underrepresented community and journalists. So it will be challenging, but we want to take the challenge. Um, thank you so much for sharing this and echo a lot of what the panelists are saying. Um, I myself was an alum of this cohort, and I'm wondering if you can share, did you pivot along the way? Um, you know, and, and share, you know, how you kind of came to that, if you, you know, changed your focus or, um, you know, or shed some part of what you're thinking you were doing or simplified. I think there's just always learnings on what you focus yourself to do and what you leave behind and, and what you learn from that. Okay, uh, thank you. So, uh, sorry, if I, if I misunderstood your question, are you, uh, asking me about the story, how I come up with the Bangla AI? Sure, anything uh, on, you know, how you kind of, okay. what you've learned along the way. Sure, thank you. Okay, okay, thank you so much. So if I talked about the, uh, this program, specifically about the uh, NYC Media Lab and AI Local News Challenge. So first of all, they give uh, all the resources uh, that are needed uh, because for uh, Matt, uh, they have connection, is based in New York City. and the people I want to work with, they are based in New York City. So that every partner, for example, if I want to make a training, so Matt helped me to connect with the CCM. That's a really helpful. And when I approach them, because they can give me the facility to train them and go to the proper people. And even when I talked about the Associate Press, because there was someone from Associate Press and New York Times. So what I needed, so as I mentioned, Bangla AI is just a bridge between the mainstream media and the ethnic media. So I feel like, uh, AI local news challenges helping me to build the bridge. So other than that, I, I don't have any resources to build a bridge. I just have an idea. So there could be a bridge, but I don't have any bricks. I don't have any engineering, nothing. So I think that's where AI local news challenge comes and says, hey, we have the resources. You can actually build a bridge. <laughs> 